Well, next on our series, Talking to MHK's uh, one year into this government, we've got Graham Kajim, uh, Minister for Children, Education or Education and Children. It's one of those... Education and, and Children. Uh, it's, it's, we've talked about this before. It doesn't really sum up your job anyway. It doesn't. It doesn't. Because you've got tons of other things. And you get new stuff, of course, Yes. Uh, so uh, a big part of ours is sport as well and culture. And uh, in the next few months, we'll be getting the Villa Marina, Gaiety, and also um, Employment and Skills. Is this uh, one you, I mean, these things you wanted, or was it sort of, oh, that's what we can get rid of from DED to well, become this new enterprise? Well, I, I think how it works is that um, previously, I, uh, back in, I think it was about 2008, I was in the Department of Education then, and you had the employment side there. Um, then it was felt that it was probably better that it went off with um, DTI at the time, mm. and then DED. But it actually fits better in with us because we're actually doing a lot of the training. So that at the uh, UCM, we've got all the apprentices, the training, and the, so it, it links in with us a lot better. The title just doesn't seem to work. I mean, are you working on that? <laughs> it is, yes. Uh, education and children is not just what we do. We do sport, culture. So education can be from preschool right the way through to you know the night courses that we do for, for, for everybody. Well, have you found the, the, the first year in this one? Because, I mean, obviously in the last government for a while, you were running the buses and all that sort of stuff, weren't you? Then you, you lost, sort of lost that position. No, no, the no. The department no, went, didn't it? No, no. I, I'm, I think I'm the only uh, minister to actually shut their department down. Yes. So, you so, went, you disappeared. Well, it was one of the things that uh, when we were looking that we had to uh, get savings in. And, you know, when the Treasury Minister comes along and says, right, well, you've got to take these savings. So we dealt with the bus issue and we dealt with some other issues. And then the next year you're told, right, well, you've got to have some more, a big chunk of savings. It was a case of, well, which is more important, the services or the department? And my thought was, it's far better to keep the services and close the department. When the music stopped, you didn't have a chair, did you? No, but that's one of the things. Yeah, one of the areas was, do you know what, if we made a saving, I think in the time they were talking about nearly half a million pounds a year by closing the department, you know, that's what we were saving. That's year on year. So we, we were we actually did a large part of our our bit to actually trying to rebalance the budget. Okay. So the new government comes in. There's all these new members. You obviously were in the the, the you know you'll be a minister. You're happy to take that role, were you? I mean, did you want this particular one? Or yes, yeah. Th th this is this is a role that sort of um, before I took over the, the Department of Community Culture and Leisure, um, when Peter Caron uh, left. And I got the call, would you go to a department? I thought, right, well, education, uh, that'd be the great one to go to. And I did say to Alan Bell at the time, you know, education would suit me better rather than community culture and leisure. Um, but things went the way they were. So I took over DCCL, you know, and I said to him at the time, you know, if you give me a job, I'll do the job. But, you know, don't complain afterwards if you've done the job. How have you found this one, though? I think this is one of the best jobs we've got. You know, across all the government, you know, there's so much that we can do to shape people's futures. You know, our, our young people, the things that we're doing. You know, uh, we're changing the way on preschools. We're looking at lifelong learning. You know, we've got uh, higher and further education that we're dealing with. So, you know, so you're happy. You, I mean, would you like to, anything else? No, no, no. This, this, there's lots for me to do here. Um, you know, we've only just started. We're, we're doing the uh, education bill. Um, we're dealing with the preschools. I'm still dealing with the uh, lifelong learning. We're working with businesses, trying to get the businesses into school to encourage our children into, into industry early, to try and enthuse them into what uh, working life is like. You've had a few controversies in, in the year. I mean, do you think you've handled them well? Do you think it's, you know... Yes, some... you, know, uh, you know, whatever happens, there will be a certain number of the public will not be happy with what decisions you actually make. But we are actually elected to make those decisions. And I suppose you could uh, do the uh, football manager analogy that um, there's lots of people at the st uh, standing at the stands shouting, but somebody's actually got to put the, the name forward and do the job. OK, have you found two different uh, styles you know, between Bell and Quayle? Um, I, I would say that Howard's very good. He, he does listen to you, and, and, and in Council of Ministers there, there is, it, it's far more relaxed, and people are getting on a lot more than when it, uh, Alan Bell was Chief Minister. Because what was it like then? Was it, was it confrontational? 
it was at, at times it was very challenging because you knew that what you wanted to do. It's great word, challenging. It covers all sorts of things. <laughs> that one, come on. It's like they say. The beans. Is it, they said, is it, is it is it challenging or is it an opportunity? Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but it is. It's one of those things that different people have different, different person, yeah, 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 different yeah, personalities, that. and that's one of the things that uh, comes across is that. Alan had a different style of how he ran uh, Council of Ministers, um, and Howard's got the way that he runs Council of Ministers. Mr. Bell was always saying he's never a dictator, but other people might disagree with the way that you can use that word obviously loosely. But I mean, yeah, well, it was my yeah, way or no way sometimes. Was well, this more uh, well democratic? It is, and, and one of the things that I've always said and I'd previously said is that you know, um, yeah, as Council of Ministers and as backbenchers as well, we should all be engaged on how we're actually uh, developing policy. So this administration has taken great pains to go through and develop the policy with the backbenchers as well. So everybody's been engaged with coming up with a programme. It just sounds too good to be true. I mean, I'm a cynical man, yeah. aren't I? I mean, is it, is it just everything's fantastic there? I mean, uh, No, it's not. Not everything's fantastic, but everything has that word challenging again. Yeah. But, you know, everybody's elected virtually as independents, so people will have different views on different topics. But I think generally, um, when you see the way that uh, Keyes and Tyndall is going, there's far better engagement with the backbenchers than previously. So uh, members are engaged in processes going forward. And sometimes, uh, you know, somebody will drop the ball and... and yeah. The, you know, people feel left out, but that's the nature of um, politics, I it, suppose. It's interacting with the public. I mean, we've, we've had a trial of putting some cameras in to Timbal so people yeah. can see what's going on. And for people who didn't see the last Timbal, it's, 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 even that is quite a different mix, isn't it? It's much yeah. sort of, it's quicker. Everything's moving along at a speed. And I mean, is that because everyone's agreeing or you just don't want to have a debate? No, no. I, I think what happens is we do the, a lot of the, the groundwork before stuff goes to Timbal. You know, and if you look back what, um, in, in my first term, the amount of things that I managed to get through Tinwald as private members' motions is because you put the spade work in at the start, you explain to members why you want to do something, and you bring them along rather than just turn up in Tinwald and go, ah, right, this is what I want to do. Right. Um, so a lot of behind, I mean, everyone gets briefings, don't they? Everything, yeah. and so most of the work, you're saying the spade work's been done, so it's almost like sign off by the time it gets to Tim. Well, you still have that debate in there, but it's given people the opportunity to ask the questions as they go along. Yeah. And one of the things that, um, you know, councils and ministers are looking to do is actually to publish where we're going to and how we're doing. So it's going to be a, a small document about where we're going. Let's talk about you as um, the MHK now, you know, with your constituents. How, how do you find... The balancing act for you, being the minister and doing that works well. Well, it, it's it's no different because I, you know I was previously a minister, so it, there's, there's not a lot of difference. What sort of type ratio though, is, would you say you, it, does it do you know, between your, your work as a minister and as an, as an MHK for the area? Well, well, it's it's quite interesting because you know we've always get, get this thing about the long summer recess. Well, it's actually at times busier now because you haven't got keys and tinwald in there so people think that you've got that time so there's more contact time during uh, the recess and you've got more time to go in the department and, you de and you're developing policies so it gives you that extra time to develop the policies and actually um yeah but do, do people ring up and say that my drain's blocked or something like that you know do you stick to that sort of level of interaction with you oh, oh yes so you get the phone call my drain's blocked <laughs> um uh, i'm having this housing issue yeah. um so you get all of those and the bigger issues of right this is this is a multi do you get compromised business. much though being you know in the council of ministers and dealing with things that sometimes you have to sit back and say i can't deal with that one no i don't, I don't think there is because um one of the areas that you do is you, you do know which hat you're wearing at that time yeah and at, at times being a minister is helpful because, and, and being one, one of the longest serving members of the House of Keys is helpful because I've been in quite a number of departments to know the person to contact. Okay. So you can deal with it in that sort of I'm guessing basis. you still get university issues. We've had one in the news only the other week. I mean, is that some, have you got a feeling that the Ireland government should be paying those fees still for universities or, you know? Well, we are. Yeah, but properly, they, I say properly, the, the old way or, or the way that, and have things gone wrong with means testing or some, some people aren't getting the money they want? No, I, I think what, what it is is that we've all known that for, for some time it's, uh, I think it was 200 UCAS points, but they changed the way that they calculated the UCAS points. And, and what it is, it's 80 UCAS points to get funding. Yeah. 
So it's, you know, so... Your website was wrong or something, wasn't it? Or no, misleading? No, what's happened is that um, I think people can ca have been trying to count an AS level and then count an A level, but you can only count the one subject Double dipping once. you, Yeah, you can't, right. you can't count the same twice. So you're happy with, with the system? So, so um, the one that was made the news, it, you know, went through our student awards. The student awards people said, no, this is actually it. So it did go through and they said, no, the, the points are the points. And the difficulty that you have there is that f for that individual, it, 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 it is disappointing that they can't actually uh, go, go on that course but we have only a certain amount of funding and we all know that sort of budgets are pinched everywhere. How is your budget? Do you, do you get squeezed? I mean, you, you're probably yeah. one of the cherished ones, aren't you? Because no, no, ours, ours has, has stayed about the same. Yeah. Um, do you have to fight for more? Well, Is it a fight or do you just get, no, this is I, what you got? And I, th I think ministers have to have that reality that um, we know how much money the government re revenue is and to then go and be irrational and say, well, I would like to go and have... Ten million pounds more to do all these other bits and pieces. We all know it has to come from somewhere. Are you still handing out free iPads to everybody? Is that still going on? You know, you speak. Do all people have things like that at one stage? No. iPads and no, 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 no. computers. Who too? I thought all the pupils, you know, at one stage were had the access to. Oh no, sort of no, no, the schools have access yeah. to um, computers. Yeah, because oh. you have to have access to computers. I know, but we're I... not going to get slates out for everybody <laughs> in a piece of chalk. There was a jolly days when it was a lot of money basically in the pot. Yeah, yeah I, I think um, during my first time in education, you know, when when we just you had hit, money, we, when we had that uh, that money there, it was amazing that you were seeing so many Apple products out there. Like but, but then, you know, we had other jurisdictions coming over to see how the Apple yeah. products worked on the Isle of Man. And I, I, and I think we were getting a very good deal from Apple because okay. it was sort of like a showcase. Okay. How have you done in the year? You know that question's coming. and get, I'm looking for a number between, you know, zero and ten. How have you fared this time in the last 12 months? Your rating, please. That's tough. It is, it, it is tough, but... But one of the areas that you've got is, and you're going to say political answer, and I've yeah. seen the other ones, that everybody's <laughs> yeah. going... You bounce me off. Yeah, but, but, but it's like, it, I could say to you, how do you, how do you judge, how would, how would you judge Manx Telecom yeah, review? I ask the questions. <laughs> That's the difference. You may answer the questions. I, I, I would say that um, coming into the department, I, I've done as well as I, I would expect for the first, first year. We've got lots of stuff to so do. So a 10. You give me so a 10. No, I think there's there's areas that you would miss, mm -hmm. but you know, for dedication, I put a lot of time into this. Eight nine. Eight nine. Eight nine. That's great. That's the highest one we've had, I think. And the other one, of course, the government as a, as a whole. You you know, you and the government. How are you doing out of ten? That's a, that's a more difficult one. Interesting. Because what you're talking about is how are you going to compare with it. Are you comparing it with the last administration, the administration beforehand? No, no. Whatever you want to say, I mean, the question is, is open, so you can, you can I, take I, it. I, I would say this administration so far is better than the previous one that any of the five years in the, in, in the last five. I understand that. So what so, number? So, so it's, it's better. I, I would say probably a solid eight. A solid eight. Would you want to be seen as a career politician? I mean, you, you've been there some time now. You're not, you don't want to go back to being in the post business or something? You, you're happy I, was, to... I was a lecturer at the Isle of Man College as well. And, I know. So, and it's amazing it, how people drag one, that one of the... I know. That, I know. And it's like, so how, 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 can, how, we can, how we can sort of try it. And, do you know... Do you uh, want to from, be a politician forever? I mean, you know, do you see yourself MLCing as well? And all those sort of things. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy this job. I think this is the best job in the world. You know, uh -huh. it really is because you're able to help people, you're able to influence the way things are going into the future. I think one of the things that people don't understand is the amount of commitment it takes from the individual and their family because you know, you, you'll see some of the stuff on what you could call the anti-social media where people are having a pick and they've got, it, it's, they, they, it's like rumour mill. Hurt you? It does, and people say you should, should be thick-skinned about it, but it, it does. You know, if somebody says something about you and it's untrue, yeah. and 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 especially when they go, oh yes, I know this person. Well, go and put your name to it, mm. and and I think they hide behind it. And I think for for this job, um, as as time goes by, you think that the job's never finished because. You know, as we're going through now in, in, in the Department of Education, I would like to say that I would like to see the next five years through in the Department of Education because 
I've got a vision of where I want to go to. I want. So you're happy to stay with this department? Yeah. For the whole thing. And do you see yourself ever going for chief minister? If that's all. No. Would you no no considerations? Never say never. No, I, I, no. I, I wouldn't do it for somebody to be the chief minister to be able to go on to that stage as it? a chief minister. I think he's doing very well at it. You know, it's one of those things that needs to be developed. Um, it's like Jeff Corkish in, in my department. Do you know, Jeff is a, a, a great public speaker. He can go out there and do that. And people have those skills. And I think what you have to do across the whole of Tinwald is use people's skills. And that's why when we have the MLCs, I, I really... Which one be one? No, it's, it's, Ever? it's, it's one of those things that we don't know what the MLCs are doing. I enjoy this job now. You know, um, if you go and say into the future who would be there and how's Tim will go into shape, I don't know. But I think what we've got to do is utilise the people in Tim with their skills. Because if, if you've got, um, say, your broadcasting skills, and, you, and why would you not utilise somebody with those sort of skills in that area? And that's with um, members of the Legislative Council. They have specific skills. You've got business people in there. You've now got lawyers. Why would you not want to use those skills to better the Isle of Man? And, and that's why you vote for the people to go for members of the Legislative Council. Okay. And I suppose one way for Legislative Council is that they can make decisions, hopefully without sort of um, the fear, because there will be a number of politicians that in the past have decided not to make the awkward decision because they thought it would be unpopular. You know, and when I did the, um, dealt with the buses, you know, previously that hadn't been dealt with because, you know, yeah. sometimes it would be unpopular. Uh, just finally, is there anything you want to push through over next year? You've got your eyes set on particularly? Well, um, I think next September we'll have a, a big move on the uh, preschools. So the preschools will be moving on. We've got the education bill, which is, which is a big piece of legislation coming forward. We've, um, we're looking at how we can combine uh, our higher and further education across the whole. So of loads of things. So there's loads of stuff here. That's we all do. education. That's what. You know, that's your and sport. Ed. You know, sport. sports fantastic. You know, the results that we got out in uh, Gotland, out in the Commonwealth Youth Games. We've now got the the. Yeah. Are, you, are you off to the Commonwealth Games next week? No, I'm not. All right. Okay. Because you got some flack from going to Gotland. And, and, and that's one of the things that we, I said I wasn't going to go to the Commonwealth Games because it's trying to justify the value of going to the Commonwealth Games. When I went off to Gotland, I think by bringing the Games back here with a value of two to three million pounds, I think... Have we got a date yet for that? Um, it's around 2025, 20, 27. Unless someone drops out. You, you, you said yeah, you're quite keen to yeah, pick up. If, if people can't do it, then we're ready for it. But you know, when you think of 3,000 odd pounds for the chief executive and myself to go out there and you come back with two to three million pounds worth of the economy, and that's where the people don't see the value of actually going out there. Okay. Thanks for joining us. We'll Thank probably you. do this all again next year. Another year.